to Sugar Ray. His winning ways are in jeopardy. Lamada coming out of it again. Lamada painting left hand. In this episode, we're going to talk about boxers' fractures. This is an ancient chief complaint. These fractures have been around for as long as fists and interpersonal strife have existed. And they are still extremely common today, representing 40% of all hand fractures, highlighting the importance of managing them as well as we can. A metacarpal fracture can occur at any point along the bone, whether it's through the head, neck, shaft, or base. The ones at the neck are what we call boxer's fractures, classically, and the most common mechanism for these is a direct axial load with a clenched fist. And the most common metacarpal injured is going to be the fifth with the fourth trailing that. As most emergency physicians have noticed, these are not usually seen in boxers, but rather in amateur street fighters who strike with the ulnar aspect of their clenched fist. A majority of these injuries are isolated injuries, closed and stable, though we will review the management of other types. When a patient presents with this type of injury, the details surrounding the injury are notoriously questionable, but we do the best that we can in gathering an accurate history. One of the most important things with the exam is that you want to ensure that this is an isolated injury. And when you examine the hand, you may note a loss of the knuckle contour or shortening. A thorough evaluation of the skin is important because a significant number of these patients will also have fight bites and require irrigation and antibiotics. Patients are also commonly tender along the dorsum of the affected metacarpal. Evaluate the range of motion because the commonly seen shortening results in extension lag. And what I mean by that is for every two millimeters of shortening, there's going to be on average a seven degree decrease in the ability to extend that joint, the MCP joint. Another important component of the exam is to check for rotational alignment of the digits with the MCP and PIP at 50% flexion. This can be done having the patient partially clench their fist and ensuring that the axis of each digit converges near the scaphoid pole or mid-wrist. Deformity is often due to imbalance of volar and dorsal forces, which commonly results in dorsal angulation of the fracture. This may be grossly notable, but can only be appropriately estimated with radiographs. When ordering x-rays, AP lateral and oblique views should be obtained, and the degree of angulation is estimated with the lateral view. When measuring this, be mindful that the normal angle between the metacarpal head and the neck is 15 degrees, and pathologic angulation, which is what we care about, is deviation from this angle. Most boxer's fractures may be splinted with an ulnar gutter splint. However, they must be closed, not significantly angulated, and not malrotated. When splinting, place the wrist in slight extension with the MCP or knuckles at 90 degrees and the DIP and PIP in a relaxed, slightly flexed position. A closed reduction is indicated if there is significant angulation. And what defines an acceptable degree of angulation depends on the recommendations, but the 20, 30, 40 rule is commonly used. By this rule, angulation less than 20 in the middle finger 30 in the ring finger, and 40 in the pinky finger metacarpal do not result in decreased functional outcome and generally do not require reduction. If reduction is indicated, analgesia with a hematoma block or ulnar nerve block are commonly used. The maneuver for this is the 90-90 method or the JOS maneuver, and a video for this maneuver is going to be linked in our show notes. Some patients may have a mild deformity or decreased functionality and strength with hand grip after this injury. Although most patients may be okay with this, there is a group who may request a referral to a specialist for cosmetic reasons or if their occupations require an optimal functioning of their hands. Emergent evaluation is required if there is an open fracture or neurovascular compromise associated with the injury. Now on to follow up. Patients with fractures of the fourth and fifth metacarpals with angulation should be referred to a hand specialist within one week. And if the second and third metacarpals are affected within three to five days. Instruct the patients to maintain the hand elevated when possible and intermittently apply ice. They should stay immobilized for three to four weeks in their splint while their fracture heals and know that it may take up to six weeks for the fracture to fully heal. Finally, take home points for this episode. Boxer's fractures are one of the most common fractures we see as emergency physicians. When evaluating these patients, ensure that there are no other more severe life-threatening injuries and pay particular attention to the skin exam as you do not want to miss a fight bite. Reductions may be required if there's significant angulation, which is guided by the 20-30-40 rule. 
Finally, emergent specialist evaluation is indicated if there's an open fracture or evidence of neurovascular compromise. That's all for this episode. Continue to follow us on Twitter and visit us at our website, coreym.net. We have a lot in store for you guys this season, including additional videos, dissection of the most recent and classic literature, and core content review. Until the next one, this is Brian Gaberti, signing off.